Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful knitted headband. So let's get started. So I've made so many of these little headbands. They are great gifts and you can also sell them in craft shows. They have a beautiful knot in the front and when you turn it around, the stitching is absolutely amazing on your machine. So really quick and easy to make. So let's get started on some of the supplies that you're going to need in order to make this. Okay, so to get started on today's project, I'm going to be using Yarn Lane Impeccable Yarn. And this is a medium weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic and you can use any yarn of your choice. I would just stick to the medium weight category. Now I'm also going to use some waste yarn. So have some of that readily available. And I'm going to be using a darning needle. Now I like to use darning needles that have a little bent tip. I find that it makes it a little bit easier to pick up the stitches off of the machine. But if you don't have one with a bent tip, that's totally fine. You can just use a straight darning needle instead. Now I'm also going to have some snips to cut my yarn. And I'm going to be using the Centro 40 pin needle machine, which does not have a row counter. So I do have a manual row counter that I use. Some people have some digital ones. You can just use whatever's better for you, or you can just keep track of the rows that you're doing on your machine. Now, I'm using the 40 pin Centro knitting machine for this project, but you can use the 48 pin needle machine, or if you have an Addy, the 46 pin needle machine. Now the difference that you're going to have is only about an inch of width. So here are two different headbands that I did. This was on the 48 pin needle machine, which was the central, and this one was on the 40 pin. I do like the way it looks on the 40 pin because it is not as wide as it is here is about an inch difference between the two. So depending on what your preference is, you can pick the machine that you're using. For these headbands that I did, I did use the I Love This yarn, and this is the terracotta color. So if you like this color, you can go ahead and get that yarn, or just go ahead and get the yarn of your preference. I'm also going to have a screwdriver here with the adapter for the machine. That's just gonna speed up the process. You don't really have to have this, but I just like to do things just a little bit quicker. Other than that, if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and manually crank it. It's totally fine. Okay, I think that's everything that we're gonna need. So let's get started with this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is take your waste yarn and you want to go ahead and cast on. Now I have marked my Centro machine with a black Sharpie just on the ring here, just to indicate when the black needle is going to come around. That's just really for my reference, just so that I know that row is ending. I like to kind of see that kind of helps me out a little bit, but totally not necessary. It's really just for me. So you're going to want to make sure your black needle is up and we're going to go ahead and do the cast on process, which is just looping that around the black needle. And then you're going to weave your way through the front and through the back of each of the pins all the way around until you reach the end of the row. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you're totally new and really don't know what the cast on process is, don't worry, I have a video on that. Just go ahead and search for that one. That should be able to help you out because it has some really close up shots so you can see exactly what happens. But the basic concept of it is for you to weave the yarn through the front and back of each of the pins on the machine. So let's go ahead and do that. I really love the 40 pin needle machine. It's really soft and kind of easier for me to kind of maneuver through the yarn. So just go ahead and do front and back until you get to your last white pin. Then go ahead and put it into the yarn feeder, just like I did here. 
we're gonna do a couple of rows with the waist yarn. I like to do maybe about seven rows of waist yarn. I think that's just perfect for you to be able to start this project. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now that I've gotten to the end of about seven to eight rows of waist yarn, that's totally a good number for you. You don't really need any more than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my yarn and I'm going to put it inside the middle of my centro machine. Now my waist yarn is in between my last white needle and my first black needle. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my working yarn now, find the end, and you're going to want to insert your working yarn in between the last white needle and the first black needle. So in the same loop that your waist yarn is in, you wanna start off in that same area. Go ahead and put about, about a handful in here. Just go ahead and put it in and then put it into the yarn feeder. Now I like to put it into the second tension slot. So I'll go ahead and put it in there. And then you're going to go ahead and crank about 90 rows. And I'll do the first couple because I do like to hold my waist yarn and my working yarn. And then I want to go ahead and crank it a couple of rows just until I see the needle has gone down. That makes me feel a little secure that it's in there good. And then I'll go ahead and start cranking 90 rows. So go ahead and do the 90 rows and I'll meet you back here. So I'm almost there, but what I will want to tell you is to go ahead and roll the bottom of your project so it's not touching the table. This way your stitches are not going to be distorted. So once you get maybe about 60 or 70 rows, it's probably going to start touching your table. So go ahead and just roll it up from the bottom or you can roll it inside either way. It doesn't matter as long as it just has it nice and rolled up and it's not touching the table on the bottom. So just roll it onto itself and then just continue on until you get to those 90 rows. Okay, so I'm just coming on to my 90th row and I see my black needle is coming up. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my snips and I'm going to leave just about a long tail, maybe about of the size of my hand. Go ahead and snip that yarn, place it into the middle. And then you're going to go ahead and grab your second set of waist yarn. And you're going to put it in between that last white needle and the first black needle along with where your working yarn is. Go ahead and insert it into the yarn feeder. I'll go ahead and put it on the tension. You don't really have to, but you can if you want to, just makes it easier. And I like to hold on to my working yarn and the waist yarn just maybe about after the third or fourth needle goes down. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tug on it just a little bit, make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do about seven to eight rows with the waist yarn. And then we'll be ready to finish off this project. So let's just go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we've gotten to about eight rows using our waist yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my waist yarn in the middle of the machine again. You can go ahead and snip it off. I like to reuse some of my waist yarn, so sometimes I just kind of don't snip it and just kind of put it in the middle and then rewrap it again and use it for another project. Now I want you to go ahead and grab the darning needle. And this is where the bent tip kind of falls into really being handy because this is where you'll be able to lift off the stitches from the machine and the bent tip really allows you to kind of get in there and grab that yarn. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hold on to the waist yarn that I just put in. 
I'm going to crank one full round so that I can release the stitches and then we'll be ready to go ahead and start with the darning needle. So go ahead and crank one full row. Coming up on that row. And I don't want my black needle to come up just yet. So it's just barely making it there. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my darning needle. And you'll want to grab your waist yarn because what you're going to want to do now is go ahead and thread your needle into the waist yarn so that you can pick up the stitches. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we have our darning needle threaded with our waist yarn, we're ready to begin the cast off process. Now, if you're new and you don't know how to do the cast off process, please go ahead and check my video out because I'll show you some detailed steps and with really up close videos so you can see exactly what you need to do. But you're basically going to get your darning needle and you're going to pick up all of the stitches going all the way around until you've picked them all up off of the machine. And then we'll be able to remove this off of our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that by picking up the stitch and just threading it through. And I'll go ahead and crank a little bit just to get each needle closer to me as I continue to cast off. Now, as you get more comfortable with the cast off process, you can pick up two or three stitches at a time without having to do this one by one. It's really just a matter of preference and how comfortable you are with the process. Okay, now we are ready to pick up our last stitch. So go ahead and take that. And you can go ahead and remove your project from the machine. Go ahead and give it a nice little stretch. You can unroll it and stretch it out. Just kind of helps to set the stitches. Then go ahead and stretch it this way as well. Just give it a nice little hug. Okay, so I think now we are ready for our next step on assembling the headband. So let's get to that. Okay, so we're ready for the next step. Now, one thing I did neglect to say when I was talking about the supplies is you will need a crochet hook. I am using a four millimeter crochet hook for this project, but I think if you have a five or six millimeter crochet hook, it will be perfectly fine as well. What we're going to be doing is closing up the yarn. We're gonna close up the two ends and as you can see, this is why the waist yarn is really great for you to pick one that has a contrast color to your working yarn. That way it makes it so much easier for you to see. So what you'll have here are the two tubes. You're gonna go ahead and take one end of the tube and what we're going to be doing is using our crochet hook to cinch the two ends of the yarn together, essentially closing up the tube. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to hold up one end of the yarn together so that I can see the working yarn stitches going across. You're going to pick your working yarn starting from one end and just think of it like a zigzag pattern. Now, if you want to see this up close on how to close the tubes, I have that on another video so you can see it really up close. So let's go ahead and get started now with this. I have my tube, I have it closed up in front of me and I've got the ends of the working yarn as well as the waist yarn on this side. So I'm going to want to start on the opposite end so that I, when I work my way all the way across at the end, I'll go ahead and cast off 
with the yarn using the crochet hook. Now I use the central 40 pin needle machine. So you're going to want to start in the middle. And if you kind of cinch it together, it kind of collapses together. And you can see this is where you are going to want to start. But to be completely accurate, since we have the 40 pin needle machine, we're going to cut that in half. So you're going to count 20 stitches and you're going to start on that 20th stitch, catching both the yarn from one side to the other. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is my 20th stitch. I'll go ahead and grab that. Let me just make this a little bit closer for you. So you're going to grab the 20th stitch from the bottom and you're going to grab the one that is right next to it on the top. So you have your working yarn from the bottom as well as the top. We're going to go ahead and make sure that those two are together. Let me just do that again for you. So it's your 20th stitch on the bottom. And then you're going to grab the very next stitch of your working yarn that is in that top row. So you'll have two stitches on your crochet hook. Then go ahead and pull it through. Now you're going to want to grab the stitch that is in this bottom row right next to it. Go ahead and grab that yarn and pull it through. Then you'll grab the one from the top and this is where the zigzag will now begin. You'll always want to grab one from the top, one from the bottom. You're going to grab one and pull it through. So go ahead and grab that top working yarn only. Do not grab the waist yarn so that you have two stitches on your crochet hook. So there's two stitches there. Go ahead and pull through. Now you've just worked the top one. So now let's work the bottom one. Go ahead and grab the next working yarn stitch and pull it through. Now continue to do this all the way to the end. And right before we get to the end, I'll meet you back here and I'll show you how to tie it off. Okay, so we've come to the last stitch. So we'll go ahead and pull through on that last one and then just continue to pull it so that the yarn comes completely off. And you've now cinched it up completely, so it should look like this. Nice and close. Now, if you missed a stitch, go back and just unravel it until you grab that stitch, because it will leave a little gap and start to unravel on your project. So go ahead, now that you've got everything stitched up on this end, you're going to repeat the same process on the other side. And we're also going to remove our waist yarn by just pulling on the yarn. And I'll show you how to do that once we are done on the other end. Okay, so we started off with our first two stitches. And we're just going to yarn over. Now you can start on the top or the bottom row. It really is just a matter of preference. Okay, so we're ready to grab that very last stitch. 
a little hidden. Sometimes it can get a little tight towards the end. Go ahead and grab that last stitch and pull through all the way, pulling the yarn all the way out. Now you can see all the stitches are nice and secured. And we want to go ahead and start removing the waist yarn. So go ahead and find that waist yarn and you can start pulling it through. Now, the waist yarn sometimes is a little easier when you finish the project. So the last waist yarn that you have will be a little bit easier to unravel than the first. But all you have to do is kind of pull on the yarn, releasing it from the loop. And once you do that all the way around on the first row, then you can just pull on the yarn and it will come right off. And that'll leave you a nice clean edge of your working yarn. It looks really nice. So go ahead and release this. And just pull it across every couple of stitches or so. And once you get to that point, you should be able to just pull the yarn and it will unravel all on its own. So just continue to pull until you get all of it off. You'll see that last row coming off there. Just go ahead and hold on to your project and pull stitches will come right out. And there you have it, a nice clean finish in the end here. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you can see here we again have a nice clean finish in the end. So now we're ready to go ahead and assemble this together with the knot. So let's move over to our next step. Okay, so for our final step and to be able to make that little twist, go ahead and lay your yarn right on a flat surface. Then you're going to grab this and kind of like fold it in half only on the edges. Then go ahead and bring it together. So you have a V on both ends. And you're going to want to insert one on top of the other. So you're just going to put this and kind of weave it into each other. So you've got the top going across and the bottom, just the two together. So I'll do that again for you. You take your two ends, go ahead and put them together, and then just keep that closed. Now, what you're going to want to do is now take your darning needle and you're going to want to do a stitch, just a slip stitch going all the way around from one end all the way down to the other. That will secure the little knot in place and make that little headband. So we're going to cinch that together. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my darning needle to do that. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of the strands of my working yarn that I had, right? I had not snipped it off just yet. So you have two strands here. You can just pick one that you can start off with. Go ahead and thread your darning needle through that. Okay, once you have your needle threaded, 
you're going to want to grab your project and you're just going to stitch through all four layers, making sure that you pick up all four layers as you are going across. So just go ahead, if you need to adjust it a little bit just to make sure you have all four rows lined up. Then go ahead and pick up that first stitch. Make sure you grab the second one, the third row, and the fourth row. So you have all four rows onto your needle. Then go ahead and pull it through. And then just continue to work this going back and forth, picking up all four rows for each one that you do until you get to the end. So go ahead and pick it up again, all four rows making sure you get a loop on each of them. Okay, once you get towards the end, I'll go ahead and do my last stitch here. And with the other working yarn that's across, I'll go ahead and do a little knot. And then you can hide your yarn by just kind of going back into the yarn here. And just kind of zigzagging, working through it. And then just pulling it to the other side. So now you've gone ahead and cinched that together. I'm going to go ahead and just again try to do a third little knot here. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my snips and go ahead and cut that as close to the project. It'll hide itself inside. And if you want, you can go ahead and do the same thing to the other tail. Just go ahead and put it on your darning needle and then just hide it underneath. No one is going to see that. If the end of your yarn gets a little fuzzy, go ahead and just cut it and then just try to work it through your darning needle again. And then I'll go ahead and insert it in here. You can do a little zigzag, it really doesn't matter. Just work it in a little bit, pull it through, and then grab your snips and just cut it. And you can just kind of pull it and you'll see that it disappears inside. And now all you have to do is flip this around and you now have your little twist on your headband. Quick and easy project, so fun to make, and it's just amazing what you can do with these. I absolutely love this headband. I think you will too, and it's a lot of fun to make. You can just use these for a lot of gifts, and I think that this is one of the easiest beginner-friendly projects for those that just recently got their central machine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.